Hello. Hey, what's going on, my friends? Our neighbors. Foreigners. Yeah. <laughs> and that flies back. It's on my forehead. <laughs> <laughs> my friendly fly okay it's like you're like you know it's like your parrot <laughs> that's right it sits right here it's a fly. <laughs> all right welcome to complex spinning made easy guys with uh tiger tutor frank and supportive soccer dad yeah this is an additional video to my nmr's made e easy series and that goes from parts one to eight actually so if you have no clue what how to do nmr's you should go ahead and check that out first and then when you get to the complex fitting portion, which is part five, jump back to this video. Okay? All right, cool. So I'll hand it over to Jason, supportive soccer dad. Awesome. Thanks, Tiger Tutor. And yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna kind of preface this by saying if you have not watched the other videos, I got yeah, <laughs> look at that, that's perfect. I love it. I'm gonna get mine made, so I haven't had mine made. So all of you that are wondering, it will be made, okay? But yeah, so <laughs> yeah, sorry. So what we were saying is if you have not watched those videos, make sure you watch this because it's gonna give you a great foundation to understand what we're gonna be doing here, all right? All right, so let's go ahead and dive in here. So you'll see here that the first thing we want you to do is determine the number of peaks in the proton NMR spectra and the splitting pattern for each peak, okay? So what Frank and I need you to do is go ahead and pause the video, make sure you work through that. Don't worry if it takes you a few minutes to do that, make sure you work through that so when we go through this, you're just confirming the fact that you've gotten the answers right, okay? Yeah, So let's and, go ahead and, do and we, we do recommend that you draw all the hydrogens. Yes. Yeah. In um, maybe including the CH threes. Uh, up to you. I com I completely agree. T agree, Tiger Tutors. Definitely draw on the CH threes because those are going to be important. So yeah. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. All right. So cool. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and scooch this in the middle of the screen. And like Frank just said, I want you to go ahead and draw in all the hydrogens. Okay. So we're going to have all the aromatic hydrogens, and we're going to have the methyls. In this case, you'll see I didn't draw out the three hydrogens for the methyl, but I want you doing that because that's going to be helpful in helping us figure out our three bonds to carbon. Okay. Or three bond three bond coupling. All right. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to scooch it to the left-hand side. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to see you've got a, I've got an eyeball, and I'm going to draw that so we can actually look at the Newman projection, okay? And I'm going to let Frank take over on this. Yeah, so for the Newman projection, we have a front carbon and a back carbon, the front one being the blue, the blue dot, back one being the black. Uh, when we look at it, the dot is the blue carbon, which is in front, and the black carbon is the carbon in back, okay? So once you look at it that way, you'll see an upside-down Y in the front where you have the two methyl groups down. In the back, you're going to see a right side up Y, all right? So in the front right now, it almost looks like we have symmetry. All right, and then I'll let Jason talk about the benzene rotation. Okay, cool. Yeah, so essentially when we get to this, when we're going to talk specifically, like Frank said, about actually rotating the benzene. You're going to see this in a minute. But in this case, what I want to do is I want to rotate the benzene ring so it's flat, just to kind of get it out of our way, because we're not focusing on that now. We want to focus on kind of the Newman projection. So what I want to do here is I want to draw a green line going right through the middle of the molecule. And we can see here we do not have symmetry, right? Because the left-hand side and the right-hand side do not reflect. But what we really want to pay attention to, what Frank talked, has talked about, is that we can see here the fact that now since we don't have the symmetry, we can see our left-hand methyl, which is the wedge, is seeing a bromine. But the right-hand methyl, which is our dash, is going to be seeing a hydrogen. And so we essentially we have to treat these methyl groups as two different groups. It's not going to be one peak. It's going to be two peaks in our NMR, all right? Yeah, so the front carbon is symmetrical, but the fact that the rest of the molecule is not symmetrical, or at least the back carbon isn't, yeah. that destroys the symmetry, essentially. Yeah. Exactly. And, like, and I think Frank's talked about this before. When you generate a chiral center, it throws off the whole symmetry of the molecule. So always look for those chiral centers, and then you're going to start seeing groups as being different, okay? Yeah. It's kind of weird now because in lecture, typically all your CH3s are the same, right? But mm -hmm. when you have a chiral center like that black carbon right there, and you're in a chain, then that, that destroys the flat plane of symmetry. So then all your CH2s, which are normally equivalent, they're now the symmetry is shattered, and they're all different. Yeah. yeah. And hence why it's called complex splitting, right, Frank? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> awesome. All right, so let's go ahead and put the molecule in the middle. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to remove, you'll see here, I just did it. I'm going to remove the methyl groups, the CH3s, and I'm going to remove the hydrogens on the aromatics. So I'm going to go back, make sure you see that. I'm removing two aromatic hydrogens, and I'm removing the methyl groups. The reason I'm doing that is because now we're going to do our spin, okay? So mm -hmm. what we're going to do here is Frank and I are going to label these uh, carbons one, red circle one, and red circle two, okay? And now what we're also going to do is we're going to draw a green line going through there. And now we can see with the aromatic ring, we actually do indeed have a, a plane of symmetry. So that means that anything that's reflected on the same side is going to be the same. But what I want to show you here is that this molecule actually rotates. 
So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to get rid of the green line and I'm going to go ahead and draw two green arrows to mark these hydrogens. Now watch what happens when we spin this. I'm going to take the hydrogen two and I'm going to rotate it. It's coming closer to you. It's eclipsing the one and now it's back. We can see that now the hydrogens have completely flipped. Okay. If you can rotate a molecule and you can flip hydrogens and they show up in the same spot, then they will show up in the same spot in the NMR. And now watch this. I'm going to rotate it one more time. We're going to do the one. Now it's eclipsing the two. We're going to rotate it back up. And now you can see we've got the one back where it initially was. Do you have any comments here, Frank? Yeah, I was just going to say a lot of times I tell my students to this portion for NMRs, especially with equivalent hydrogens, you really need to like channel your inner hippie and feel what the <laughs> hydrogen feels and see what the hydrogen I love it. feels. Yeah, and because the hydrogen feels exactly what the other hydrogen feels and ends up in the same environment, they're equivalent. Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah, I completely agree. Exactly. So now we can see that we've got the spinning, so we're going to actually see that we don't have two peaks, but we have one, all right? Yeah, exactly. It looks like carbon-2 is on top of the molecule and carbon-1 yeah. is below, but because of that spin, it makes them yeah. symmetrical. Absolutely. All right, so now let's take this molecule and let's scooch it to the left-hand side. And now what we want to do here is we want to go through and systematically figure out how many different hydrogens do we have, okay? And so if we look here, essentially, we can see that we've got a red one. And then now if we move here, we can see that we've got two blues, but those are not two different peaks. That's going to be one peak, all right? And so, Frank, I'm going to let you take the rest. Yeah, okay. So next we have two hydrogens, the green ones, carbon, uh, not carbon, hydrogens three. They're also spinning, so they're going to be in the same environment. And then, uh, then we get onto the chain, and that hydrogen is next to the bromine, and nobody else is next to it, so that's going to be our fourth one. Our fifth one is going to be the methyl, uh, not the methyl group, the gray hydrogen right there. And then comes the methyl group. So a lot of times people will like counter argue that, well, isn't that bond spinning as well, like chain spin as well? So why aren't those CH3s now going to be equivalent? Like the yeah. Now, the easiest way to think about it is that, well, yes, the methyl groups are spinning, but the bromine is also spinning. So the wedge methyl is always going to be paired up with the wedge bromine, if you think about it, in that rotation. And because of that, they're going to be different than the dash methyl, which is paired up with the dash hydrogen on, on hydrogen 4. All right. Uh, do you want to add anything, Jason? Otherwise? No, that, that's fantastic. Yeah, go finish it out. Perfect. Okay, cool. So then in conclusion, we actually have seven signals because the chain ones are different and then the benzene ones are the same because of that rotation. Okay? Awesome. And yeah. the bad guy here is the chiral center. It's ruining <laughs> all the symmetry and everything. Yeah, it ruins everything. Yeah. All right, so cool. So now that we've done that, let's go ahead and erase all those colors. So now we're back to square one. And now what we want to do here is we're looking for three bond coupling. That's going to be key, okay? We're going to see in another example that we sometimes see two bond coupling, but three bond is your main go-to. Four bond coupling is really hard to see. There's only going to be specific cases where you'll see that. So three bond coupling is what we want to do. So yeah. now let's just go ahead, and I just want to add in for, um, in lecture, sometimes your professors might call it like splitting, mm -hmm. um, neighbors. It's the N and the N plus one rule. Yeah. yeah, and it's basically the number of hydrogen neighbors. So hydrogens are different from you within three bonds distance, because if they're too far, they're not neighbors, they're just yeah. foreigners. Yeah. <laughs> awesome, cool. Yeah. All right, yeah, yeah go, yeah. So no, no. Okay. okay, cool, all right. So we got, <laughs> so we have our, we can see that we've got our red circle there, and now what we wanna do is figure out, you know, what's the splitting gonna be? So we wanna see what are the neighbors? And we'll notice here that if we look, now we've got two blue hydrogens on each side. And remember, they're, they're, they're exactly the same, so those are not gonna have different splitting, but we do have to count all the neighbors. In this case, we have two. And so we want to use our N plus one rule. And in this case, the N is the neighbor. So if we're looking at the red hydrogen, we're not going to pay attention to that number. We want to look at the neighbors, and there's going to be two blue ones. So if we plug that in the formula, we're going to have two plus one, and that's going to give us three, which is a triplet for the red one. That's why I've got the colors in there, the two blue and the three red, okay? And yep. so that's going to give us a triplet with that. you have anything, Frank? Yeah, I was just saying, yeah, the red one's the one we're analyzing, so we're not counting it when we do the N plus one rule. And then you, the way I do is I go like one bond, two bond, three bonds, hydrogen, <laughs> one bond, two bond, three bonds, hydrogen. Yeah. So, and then they're the same, they're equivalent hydrogens, the blue ones. So that's why uh, it's two plus one. Yeah. yeah, I like the fact that you trace it out with your fingers because sometimes just to get familiar, I would definitely walk the whole thing along and make sure that you're getting the three bonds. I think that's a great point. All right. Yeah, cool. Okay, cool. So then that's going to give us a red circle with a triplet. So that one right there should be a triplet, okay? Now, Frank, I'm going to let you go ahead and take the next one. Yeah, so the next one, oh, I see why you have me do that one. <laughs> yeah. I'm going to get into that one too. <laughs> so the blue hydrogens, um, Jason wants me to do them because, as you can see, they have two different sets of neighbors. They have the red hydrogens and then the green hydrogens over there. Mm -hmm. And uh, so we can't group them together and just say, oh, it's uh, three plus one because we have three neighbors plus one because they're different from each other. 
So it's kind of like if you have a group of Asian neighbors over there and then a, a white family over there, they're different. So it's going to be like, yeah, we're going to do, we're going to separate it and do like N plus one and then M plus one, M being the second group of neighbors. Yeah. So then we would get for the red one, the hydrogen would cause the blue ones to be a doublet because mm -hmm. it's one plus one. And then the green ones would cause the blue ones to be, oh, this is tricky. I see why. I yeah. see why. <laughs> okay, so, okay, bear with me here. So it's not going to be two plus one because each blue hydrogen only sees one green hydrogen that's yeah. within three bonds distance. Yeah. Yeah, so it's not going to be two plus one, actually. It's going to be one plus one because of the red hydrogen mm -hmm. and then one plus one again on the right side because of the green hydrogen. Yeah. So if I go on to Jason's next slide, oh, he goes over the bonding, yeah, one bond, mm -hmm. two bond, three bonds, all that yeah. stuff. Yeah, so then we're going to get a doublet because of the red and doublet because of the green. Yeah. Yeah. And I'm going to preface this by saying that I literally just dropped this on Frank. So I I had the luxury of seeing these slides. Frank has not. So you got to bear with us here in terms of this, all right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. But um, yeah, let me know if that makes sense and not ask us down below in the comments. But so in conclusion, it's a doublet of doublets, okay? Yeah. And what it would look like on the NMR would be a doublet, first of all. And then each peak of the doublet would have another doublet coming off mm -hmm. of it. Yeah. Yeah, that's exactly that's a good point. So exactly like Frank did, it would kind of look like instead of a doublet, they'd kind of be really close together like that. So a doublet of doublets, yeah. Double doublets, yeah, yeah. Awesome. And or you can think of it as like each doublet peak has another doublet. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Like a bean spread. Yeah. All right. You want to take the next one or you want me to? Sure, sure. I don't even know what's coming, so let's do it. <laughs> yeah, let's do it. All right, the green ones, all right. Yeah. So the green ones similarly, um, they have the, they do have two blue hydrogens like next to them, but each green sees just one blue hydrogen that's yes. within three bonds distance. Yeah. yeah, so I'm gonna do the top green one. So one bond, two bond, three bonds, one neighbor. So it would be one plus one, uh, doublet. Yeah, okay, cool. And then what's the next one? Um, we have, yeah, what were you trying to say here, Jason? Oh yeah, so yeah, I'll do it. So what I was doing here is I wanted to show you basically put the aromatic ring back in there, show you all the colors and just reiterate the fact that we are not going to see, we're going to see a peak for number one. We are not going to see two peaks for number two. We are going to see a single peak. And that's what Frank went over. You got to go back and look and see what the splitting was. We'll do it in a minute, but remember what the splitting was. And then for three, we're not going to see two peaks. We're going to see one. And once again, look back to see what that splitting was to make sure that you got that. Okay. Wait, let's rewind a second. What were you saying about the two peaks on the, on the number yeah, two? Yeah. So, yeah. So what I was saying here was the fact that we've got for our red circle, we're going to get one peak. Yeah, and sure. then for our blue peaks, we've got two peaks there, but it's not for each individual blue hydrogen. It's not a peak. We have one peak for both of those hydrogen, which is going to be a doublet of doublet. Yeah. And then for the last one, for our for our green, we're going to get one peak that's a doublet. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. And for every like equivalent group of hydrogens that we're analyzing, they're just going to create one signal. It's yeah. just that their neighbors are going to disrupt their signal and cause it to be split accordingly. Yeah. Okay. Cool. All right. And also, uh, some students don't know this, but aromatic rings are benzene rings, technically. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So, yeah. And you'll hear those terms that'll interchange. Yeah. Perfect. Yeah. All right. So um, the next one is the yellow hydrogen. I, I can do that one, Jason. Yeah. Cool. Go ahead. Yeah. So this one we have yellow hydrogen. It's got one neighbor on the right, the gray one. Hopefully you spotted that. It's one bond, two bond, three bonds away. And then the benzene hydrogens are too far because it's one bond, two bond, three bonds, four bonds hydrogen. Yeah. Okay. So this one's just simple splitting. Um, one plus one, doublet. Okay. Yeah. Great. Um, next one, Jason wants us to expand the methyl groups. I wonder why. Oh, so in this one, what I was doing is I was trying to show, I tried to walk them along. So I was saying like, you know, you got your yellow. And if we expand the methyl groups here, we're going to find out that basically if we go all the way to that hydrogen from the yellow hydrogen to yellow, to yellow to orange, we'll see that it's four bonds away. So we can't count those methyl groups as splitting. Yeah, exactly. That's why earlier I was like, you should probably draw your CH3. Yeah, well, exactly. Um, until you become a pro at it. So yeah. give it another day or two. Um, yeah. <laughs> and then you'll be fine. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, so it, it becomes one bond, two bonds, three bonds, four bonds to actually yeah. get the hydrogen, like Jason said. Okay. Yeah. So the the orange hydrogens don't count as neighbors for the yellow hydrogen. Yeah. Yeah, they're foreigners. They're not neighbors. <laughs> foreigners. Yeah. <laughs> and that flies back. It's on my forehead. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, my friendly, friendly fly okay it's like you're like you know it's like your parrot <laughs> it's right it sits right here it's a <laughs> all, right. all right cool uh, so yes the yellow well, hydrogen is the gray one yeah yeah the yellow hydrogen is a doublet yeah you can take you, you you want the gray one no you go ahead okay yeah i'll just keep going then yeah keep going the gray, yeah the gray one has yeah so if the gray one was the yellow one's neighbor then the yellow has to be the gray's neighbor because you know neighbor is vice versa yeah 
Good stuff. So the gray one is a doublet, but now he's one bond closer. Or he's, he's a few bonds closer so, mm -hmm. to the methyl groups. So then if you draw the methyl groups again, which Jason didn't do, but it's fine. Um, yeah. We have the I do purple. On the second one. You'll see it on the second one. See yeah, on the second one. Okay, so we have, okay. I got it. So we have the purple methyl group there, which has three hydrogens. So that's three plus one, giving him a quartet. Him being the gray hydrogen. And then we have the black methyl groups there. Same thing, three hydrogens. But remember, we have like a, a black family and a white family or a black family, Asian family, whatever, they're different. So we, we can't group them together. So it's three plus one, three plus one, quartet of quartets. Mm -hmm. uh, and then I forgot the other hydrogen. So it, oh, you expand the methyl groups. Yeah. Sweet. Awesome. Banded, you see the bond distance. And then all together, the gray hydrogen. Wow, really fancy here. It's got three mm -hmm. sets of neighbors. <laughs> yeah. All right, so he has a doublet. He's a doublet of quartets of quartets. Mm -hmm. He's a DQQ. Yeah, DQQ. <laughs> yeah. Disqualified, qualified. Yeah. And then what about the methyls, Frank? The methyls, oh, you got more. Oh, you know, Jason, yeah, take more. Over. <laughs> you want to take over? Okay. All right. Yeah. Let's go ahead and look at the purple methyl first. So yeah. what we want to notice here is that we can see that if we were to look at the methyl next door, they're actually four bonds away. So the methyls are not going to couple to each other. Okay. So the methyls are going to be individual. So if we look at the purple one, and we go up, we can see that we've got a gray hydrogen because we've already seen that these are coupled together. So you can see that if, if one couples in one direction, it's going to couple in the other. So now the purple is going to couple with the, the gray hydrogen. And that's one. So that's one plus one is two. So that's going to be a doublet. And we're going to notice here that that basically should be it. OK, then if we go to the black circle, which is our other methyl, once again, the methyls are too far away from each other. So we're going to have the gray hydrogen as well. That's going to be one plus one is two. So each of those methyls should individually be a doublet. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. um, and then if we go back here, we've got the whole molecule with all the colors. Again, the reason that we decided to put this in here is because now, just in case if you weren't following it, you can see all the colors and now systematically walk through this and make sure that you can get all the splitting pattern that we did before I'm about to click right now and walk through it again. Okay, so make sure you got that. So yeah. now, for example, if I right here clicked on this, what I'm going to do is I'm going to erase. You're going to notice I'm going to erase half of the benzene ring because we don't care about the other half. We've got that plane of symmetry. So now, if we walk through all the splitting, the red one is going to be a triplet. The blue one is going to be a doublet of doublets. The green one is going to be a doublet. The fourth one, which is yellow, is going to be a doublet. The fifth one is going to be a doublet of quartets of quartets. The sixth one is a doublet. And the seventh one is a doublet. Just so you can walk through and see if you've got all of that. All right. Any additions, Frank? No, that's a good information blast. Um, yeah. 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 Yeah, so Jason and I have two more good examples of videos. Good examples of problems yeah. that we can do. <laughs> the fly. Yeah. Um, also, just, just want to clarify, like, we're not trying to be serious about the whole, like, black family, white family thing. We're just, um, it, yeah. it helps some students understand the, the yes. splitting. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. We're, we're, yeah. We're not no, a nobody should take offense on that. That's just, that's just to try to, try to explain things. Like yeah, we're, we're not a proponent of segregation. <laughs> no, not at all, no. <laughs> Orgo apparently is. <laughs> yes. But, yeah. Yeah. Okay, cool. Um, and then I think that's it for this problem, right? Jason? Yeah, I think that's good. Cool. All right. Well, thanks for watching, guys. Um, yeah. Definitely check out part two and part three because we go over a tricky problem where, like, there's not a plane of symmetry in part three and there's, like, crisscross rotational symmetry. Yeah. Yeah. We got we got, we got some cis trans going on in the next couple of problems we're going to drop at you. So make sure you pay attention to that, all right? Yeah, exactly. So, as always, if you like this video, make sure you like it down there. And yes. um, subscribe, hit the bell button to get updated when part two and part three come out. And awesome. all that good stuff. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Awesome. And with that, cool. we, we, can't look, we look forward to seeing you guys next time. Yeah. See ya. See ya. Bye. <laughs>